Are you working hard to keep yourself limited and playing small? Is that working for you? If not, would you like to be changing that now? What if the key to activating your wealth was in the willingness to embody the abundance of possibilities you are? Would you choose it? Join in the conversation now on Living Well with your host, Keisha Clark, and receive tools and facilitation to clear the points of view that keep you stuck in limitation to begin choosing your abundance and living well right now. <laughs> Happy Black Friday in the United States, and good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good middle of the night even, <laughs> wherever you are in the world, welcome and hello, I am Keisha Clark, your host for Living Well here on A2Zen.fm. Thank you for joining us. It is Friday, November the 27th, at least for this 10 seconds or so. And wow, we're having an amazing time here already. I love the pre-show five-minute conversation we get to have because we, we get really juiced up and excited. It's always fun. And of course, with the amazing production team we have here on A2Zen, I don't say that just because I'm part of it because I actually love my co-producers. <laughs> how, how does it get even more awesome? on a Friday morning. Yay! So if you have not joined us already in the chat room, please do. If you are anywhere on the site of a2zen.fm, sorry, you can just click on uh, in the red bar near the top of your screen. You'll find the word chat room. And if you click on that, you can give yourself a name and come on in. There is no secret password or IQ quiz that you have to take to get into the chat room. It's pretty straightforward and easy to navigate. And if at any point during the show you would like to call in with a question, or share an awareness or explore something, then you can look up near the top of your screen and you'll see numbers to dial in in the U.S., in Canada, and the U.K. And if none of those will work for you, we have the Skype op option. Just call, call us up at a2zen.fm. And you just send a contract request. You don't need to wait for a reply. You just send it and then punch that little or click that little button that looks like a telephone receiver one that we no longer use anymore. Isn't that funny? Because so many of us have smartphones. So. Okay, just means digressing. So today, we have another amazing guest. How did I get so lucky? And she's also staying up late. Uh, I've had two weeks in a row that we've had folks who are having slumber parties to be on the show live with us. And I so appreciate that. Wow. Today, we get to talk to this beautiful woman who brings an authenticity because we are going to be talking about will you be courageously authentic. Her name is Pratima Nagaraj and she is a she's actually been a guest on a couple of the shows here over the, the last year on A to Zen and she has all kinds of amazing talents. Today, however, she has actually um released a book recently called Vulnerability as the road to change. And that's part of what we're going to be playing with, the topic of vulnerability and authenticity. And what is courage, actually, relative to those types of things that you might be choosing? Or if you're not choosing them, would you be considering to be choosing them? So let's talk about all of this with beautiful Pratima. Hello, Pratima. <laughs> Hi, Keisha. Thank you so much for having me here. I'm really excited and well, thank you for choosing to come and play. We were it was really I love how my show brings me into contact with new people and amazing people and awesome people and I mean it's just like meeting up with old friends really. So <laughs> thank you for coming to play. How awesome is that? <laughs> I yeah. love it. And thank you for staying up late to play as well. How how awesome oh, I'm are you? having fun. Yeah, <laughs> very cool. So I love how we can be in different parts of the world and still get to play together via the virtual platforms that we have. So I'm just going to express huge gratitude to open this show um, for all of the ways that we can play and create and co-create. And wow, and today – Part of creation uh, I'm going to play with as we're talking is, and I'm going to throw this into the mix, part of creation is really a vulnerability, is it not? Having a vulnerability, choosing a vulnerability, being vulnerable. Um, let's tell folks maybe a little bit about you because I could be jumping ahead. <laughs> I've been known to do that from time to time. So, 
proud to know is an author, a speaker, a hypnotherapist, a transformational coach, and an internationally known facilitator in, with the dynamic body of energy transformation work called Access Consciousness. Some of you might have heard us mention that on this show or some of the other shows here on H Uh She is a lifestyle entrepreneur, I love that, with a master's degree in business administration and offers business coaching to new and aspiring entrepreneurs and small business owners. She travels the world, uh, yes, she does, <laughs> facilitating <laughs> workshops and sessions that empower people to shift and transform any area of their life that is not working for them so that they may create a life they truly desire. And today we will be talking about creation. and We are talking about being courageously authentic. So where would you like to jump in, Ms. Pratima? What kind of waves at you this morning as a starting place? Oh, well, um, I think authenticity is, you know, kind of a buzzword these days. So, yeah. um, and um, I just wanted to start off with, um, you know, looking at what is really, you know, authenticity. What does it mean Perfect. to be authentic, right? Yeah. Do we even yeah. know what it is? I mean, we, we sometimes hear everybody talking about a certain thing and no one has clue of what it is, right? Yes. <laughs> Yes, I have found that to yeah. be the case. <laughs> Absolutely. So for so you, what, in, the, in the context of all of this, what is authenticity for you, my friend? What I've come to discover in the past one year, especially, is that authenticity is about the courage to be yourself. So mm -hmm. fundamentally, it is about being you fully and claiming, owning, acknowledging, and expressing all aspects of who you are, the good, bad, and ugly. You know, that, oh, like that's that. the important part, absolutely. Mm -hmm. you, it's, um, it actually sounds simple, but it's still one of the most challenging parts for most of us because we mo we're not so comfortable in looking at the bad and ugly parts of us because we have so many judgments associated with it. But mm -hmm. if only you are vulnerable enough to with you uh, and lower your barriers and look at every aspect of you without any judgment, that's when you begin to realize that even those things that you judge as a weakness is actually your strength. I love that. Will you say that again? <laughs> <laughs> So when you are uh, being vulnerable with yourself and lower your barriers to yourself and look at um, even those things that you judge as a weakness, you actually realize that it's a strength. And the only thing that makes it look like a weakness or, that, or an imperfection is your judgments of it, nothing else. Beautiful. And you talk about this in your book about – Coming to moments where you had the aha or you began to really have the awareness that so many of the places you had really made yourself wrong, you were actually able to see them in a very different way, correct? Absolutely. Absolutely. Beautiful. And especially uh, you know, while growing up where I thought I was too much, too bold, too, uh, too forthright, and I was... Um, made wrong for that. I had bought into the judgments around that and I realized that most of it is actually my strength and what actually makes me unique and different. Beautiful. And so what we might ought to share with our listeners a little bit about you. Um, not everyone has the book, <laughs> I'm aware. So if you don't have the book, Vulnerability as the Road to Change, you can still order it on Amazon and um, is it available also in the Kindle version, uh, Pratima? Absolutely, it is, okay. yes. Awesome. So you have your choices there, folks. And it's a beautiful book. It is a very pleasant, lovely read, as we say. Um, and so for folks who don't know anything about your background, um, can you tell us a little bit about where you were born? And I'm going to call you potent creator. <laughs> That's my <laughs> underlying energy here. So share a little bit with folks so Thank that they you. have more idea of where some of the elements and the variables that are in the mix of your in amazing journey. So take it away, Ms. Pratima. 
Oh, that, that's an interesting part to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I come from India. Uh, I was born in south of India uh, in the city called Bangalore, and I lived 28 years of my life there. I never traveled out, and I was actually brought up in a very middle-class, conservative, you know, typical Indian family. Me being the only child, I actually grew up with, uh, you know, the need for protection. I was told that being a woman especially, you know, I need to protect myself. So I learned to have barriers from a very young age. And I was not, I was too overprotected by my parents. I was not allowed to go out on my own and travel out with wow. friends on my own. And yeah, so it's only after I got married to my husband that I uh, traveled out of India and I started traveling the world. And I haven't stopped since then. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, one of the things you have talked about uh, on, when you visited our, one of our shows before was um, traveling, and that seems to be one of your capacities or, or one of the things you have capacities with is creating travel like just as a breeze, as a total joyful experience. Um, I was just amazed hearing some of your adventures. So, <laughs> so when we talk about courage and vulnerability and authenticity, um, what I would like to invite listeners um, to be aware of is that Prasima is not, she is coming from a really interesting point of view and a really interesting process of creation. So here is this woman who has chosen to show up in a country where it's one, not really popular, I'm, I'm going to say that's my interesting point of view, to be a female, um, in the ways that it that we might think it could be, and you have created this amazing story, this amazing journey. Um, and one of the things I look at, and you know, we've we've talked about a number of times on this show. Uh, you, we choose. We are we are acknowledging that we choose to create our lives, so that we choose to show up here, and. So you chose to show up in a baby body in India as a female. And to me, it's fascinating as I, the, the, I don't know you extremely well. I'm just getting to become friends with you cognitively. And so the little bits I've gotten to know about you and the bits I've read in your beautiful book, it amazes me the things that you have chosen and the things that you have actually just like created. Um, so many things that really go what what we could say go against the grain of the really popular culture of where you chose to show up on the planet. So when we talk about courage, that's the first thing that comes to mind is that you, as the infant being, um, would would have the the wherewithal, would have that presence actually to to choose this, and that you have chosen this and created such a lovely. Um, adventure of all of this and thank you you're welcome um <laughs> and i love in the book you also talk about you your your process of coming to the point of getting married was not like what your culture expected of you either yes yeah totally <laughs> will that you share a little really... bit about that <laughs> oh yeah absolutely <laughs> so uh you know, as I said, I come from a very conservative middle-class Indian family, and uh, arranged marriages still um, are a mainstream in Indian culture. Um, and obviously, I, w I was expected to go uh, for an arranged marriage as well. But when I actually, um, first of all, I was not married till 28 years, and I itself was a huge deviant from the societal So your family's had a meltdown. <laughs> Yeah, so <laughs> I anyway bypassed that. And then on top of that, I was looking to marry someone of my choice. And when I found the time to be right. So I um, I came across um, my uh, soon-to-be husband at that point five years back. And he used to live in Dubai at that point. And I, as you remember, I had never traveled out of India. So I had this... I, I just knew there was this energy that, yes, there is a possibility of a greater relationship with this man, and I wanted to explore it. And all I had done was just 
to him over the phone for a couple of weeks before that. So we were pretty much strangers. And I just booked my tickets and I flew to Dubai to meet him, to spend time with him. <laughs> and <laughs> that, for an Indian girl, especially, you know, my parents are, they didn't have a choice probably because I didn't give them a choice to stop me. <laughs> And there were there were my all my friends who were saying I was insane and crazy to be going to a you know faraway country wow. to meet a stranger, and but the thing is when you actually follow the energy you get the courage to choose for you and you get to oh, I like and that. the courage just comes when you're being true to your awareness what you know. Yeah, yeah. Like in those moments, were you? Did it require a great deal of cognitization, or was there just that knowing, like that sort of propelled you? What was going on for you? I mean, here's like what could have felt like the whole world telling you you're wrong for choosing what you're choosing or wanting what you're wanting, and yet you did it. Yeah, and that was one of the most courageous choices I've made, and that is one of moments in my life where I actually honored my knowing and went against everyone and everything around me. And that has wow. been one of the best choices in my life, which actually changed the entire course of my life, marrying my husband. Oh my so gosh. Um, wow. I am so grateful to myself for actually having trusted my awareness. And as you said, it's, it's not cognitive at all. It was just annoying. And even that knowing was more like a feather touch and it was like a wisp, you know. It wasn't mm -hmm. even like, oh, yes, this is what it is. And I didn't have clarity, but I had an inkling of it and I just <laughs> knew I had to follow it. And I tried to get cognitive because of people around me, you know, telling me stuff mm -hmm. that I shouldn't be doing it. And then there came a point where I had to fly tomorrow and tonight I was telling my best friend that, I don't think I want to go, you know, I don't think I'm doing mm -hmm. the right thing, mm -hmm. but I still chose it, and <laughs> <laughs> that's the courage. <laughs> you know, I have chills from my head to my toes. I'm, I'm like, just tapping into the energy of that. It's th those, wow, those moments are such um, the, the markers of how we build or how we bring the elements together of creation of our lives. Do you absolutely and and what I love is that time and time and time again, what is illustrated for us by the universe via all of the people and the creatures we interact with is it really doesn't require that you have to have all of the details in your cognitive mind. It really does not require that you know what's going to happen in the literal sense or in the step-by-step -step sense uh, ahead of time. It just requires your willingness to choose it. Wow. And tapping yeah. into the energy of you being willing to choose it, that's something I don't know that I, and not to compare, I don't want to do comparison per se, I just look at, when I hear your story and people talk about, you know, certain things that that I perceive as these enormous odds that may be against people, or how we would, that's how we would say it, and I, I look at my life and I'm like, wow, I don't know that I've ever, like, had something quite so dynamically enormous in my face. And at the same time, what I get is our choosing to show up here is enormous. And I wonder how many of us are acknowledging our choices to show up, however it is we're showing up. Um, and when we have people such as yourself who are offering us these beautiful examples of, look, you can do this, you can do this, it's just so awesome to me that that we be that with each other and for each other and and that is a part of the process of creating and you know is that inspiration that we give each other and sort of how we show up to remind each other that it is totally possible that we don't have to buy into the doubt and the the 
rumors, <laughs> I'll call them rumors, <laughs> that we can't do something. That's you know? true. Yeah. yeah. So, so first of all, thank you for showing up, and thank you for bringing your beautiful stories to the world. And wow, I think perhaps let's do. Um, we're going to take our first break, and I just want to invite everybody tap into this energy of Pratima. She's she's just being here, just being with us, doing exactly what she talks about, being courageously authentic as who she is in this moment with with no barriers. So I would like for all of us to just, if you're willing, take the next few moments as we are over our break and maybe play with the question, what what contribution could this be to my life, my living, and my reality? And I'm asking you to ask this from a place not involving your mind, but involving your knowing. And what is it that Pratima brings to us today that could absolutely shift and change and dynamically alter what it is we think we can't do into something we actually know is possible for us to choose. Whew, yeah, that's pretty potent for me. So on that note, you are listening to Living Well on A2Zen.fm. I am Keisha Clark here with the delightful Pratima Nagaraj today, and we will continue talking about being courageously authentic right after these words. Have you begun to ask yourself what you truly desire to create in your life? What if you being willing to embody abundant living was the key to your wealth and to creating greater in your life. And what if that could also be the invitation for more people to be willing to embody abundant living? Would that be a contribution to you and your body and to other people and their bodies? And might that also create more in the future? Join Keisha Clark Empowerment Agent and the host of Living Well Radio Show to discover, uncover, and crack open the wealth of possibilities you are every Friday at 11 a.m. Eastern Time, 10 a.m. Central, 9 a.m. Mountain, and 8 a.m. Pacific on A2Zen.fm. What if there's nothing wrong with you? What if you're far greater than you've ever given yourself credit for? What if it's time to know the gift and the contribution you are to the world? and to like yourself a lot more. Hi, my name is Dane here. 13 years ago, I started to truly ask questions. Actually, I started to be the question, and everything changed for me. Asking questions opens doors to infinite possibilities. And it's not about finding the answer. It's about being the question, always. What I'm inviting you to step into is something that Einstein, Marie Curie, Newton, Da Vinci, Gandhi, Picasso, and Aristotle all knew to be true. What if no question is too big or too small? What if anything is possible for you? What if together we could create a kinder, gentler, happier world? Is now the time? Go to beingyouclass.com and sign up for a free video series, My Gift to You. Beingyouclass.com What if you, truly being you, are the gift and change this world requires? Beingyouclass.com How much of your life are you truly living? Are you creating your life in celebration of your strengths and capabilities? What would your life be like if you were choosing the abundance of possibilities of you now? Connect with Keisha Clark, your Living Well Empowerment Agent now for a different perspective on creating the life you truly desire to be living. Call in with your questions in the U.S. 815-880-8255 in Canada at 613-800-8736 in the UK at 033-0001-0625, by Skype at a2zen.fm, or by emailing Keisha at livingwellnow at gmail.com. Now, back to our show. <laughs> Welcome to the next segment of Living Well here on a2zen.fm. I am your host, Keisha Clark. And I am having a delightful conversation today with the beautiful Pratima Nagaraj. We are talking about being courageously authentic, which also involves, as we are discussing, vulnerability. And for those of you who might be just joining us, Pratima wrote this beautiful book called Vulnerability as the Road to Change. And change is what a lot of things seem to involve or lead us to or invite us to. Um, and one of the interesting things that came up over the break is uh, talking about 
courage, the word courage and what it means and what we have come to make it mean and what else is possible with courage. So, Pratima, the word courageous for you, um, you wrote a beautiful um, entry in your book um, around courage. And um, would you talk for a minute about courage, first of all? What it, when courage first came up for you, when you were choosing things in your early life, was it, were you like purposely having, doing this as I'm choosing to be courageous or were you just like choosing what you desired or when did courage actually come into your awareness? You know what? Honestly, I didn't even know that I had the courage until like (laughs) uh, four months back. (laughs) Isn't that funny? (laughs) Yeah, that's me being vulnerable here out in public and saying that I had no clue that I had courage until four months back when uh, Dr. Dane here pointed it out to me, the co-creator of Access Consciousness. And that's when I started seeing, oh, that was courage. And I started pondering that and I then looked back at my life and the energy matched everywhere I actually made those choices um, I was talking to you about in my life, it was the energy of courage that was about choosing me. It was about choosing to be transparent, to be real and true to myself. And it felt like walking out naked in the world. It's like you have no armors around you. You don't have any sense of protection, but uh, all you have is curiosity, awareness, and your openness to receive everything. I love that. And I it's so very cool. You just said what you said. Um, the, every week I ask the show, what question would it like to ask? And, and I put that on the graphic that I create for the show. And the question that came up this week is actually, are you willing to choose you? And when you were just talking, part of what you included was about choosing me, as you were talking in first yeah. person about yourself. And I yeah. I love, I just love the energy of that. And And I get that for many of us, courage is presented to us as like the above and beyond and that it has a really specific definition or really specific parameters uh, of what courage is. And usually it's applied in instances that are about doing conflict or battle or standing up to someone, you know, in a really sort of overt kind of way. And for many of us, courage applies so differently. It, It could apply to just our choosing to step outside of our house that day. You know, or for a lot of people, I think it's a very courageous choice to choose to come here. You know, um, we've created some very interesting dynamics on the planet. So choosing to show up now, to be embodied now in this time with us, is a really interesting choice as well. And for many, takes courage in a different way than what we've really identified it and applied it as. So, are you? Um, if I read your past, your little note in the book would would you be okay with that oh yes please do Uh, that's that's perfect (laughs) awesome and and you you do talk about dr dane here who oh my goodness if um any of you who are listening have not met dane here um you can actually and gary douglas gary douglas is the uh founder of access consciousness uh some 27 years ago almost now and about 16 years ago um dr dane here came on board and um and they are now co-creating access consciousness and two amazing lovely creators of magnitude um and and if you've never had a class with access um you might be able to just get a little sliver of a taste if you look at any of the amazing tons of videos that are available online or you you can actually also access a number of the uh free to air classes that are displayed on the, I believe it's the accessconsciousness.com slash TV or accessconsciousness.tv. Yeah. Try one of those. And um, there's a number of classes. You'll you'll get to see some fabulous illustration of what we're talking about. Um, I want to read this passage from Pratima's book, um, 
the and her book is Vulnerability as the Road to Change. Um, to me, courage is about following my dreams, getting my desires into action, embracing my awareness and knowing, trusting myself unconditionally, even if no one else in the world trusts me. It's seeking endless possibilities, plenty of which exist out there in the universe, untapped and unknown. It is a willingness to take the risk of bringing my ideas into fruition in my own unique way and make big choices that have the potency to change the world. I just, that's just so beautiful. I thought that just perfectly presents what we're talking about. Um, Thank you. Wow, thank you. So I wonder if we allow if we begin to acknowledge the courage we be if perhaps that would usher us into more of the vulnerability more of the allowance of our natural selves just letting ourselves show up the way we are yep. in in a given moment did you find that to be a part of how it worked for you or or how did it work for you in this process um as you became aware that you wanted to share this with the world in your book and and move forward in your business and creating your life and your your living with you and your husband oh um to me actually courage and vulnerability go together you know it's it's almost like you cannot have or be one without the other mm-hmm. and if you are being vulnerable you you have to have the courage to be it. And if you are being courageous, you have to be vulnerable because you cannot have barriers and be there out in the world and be courageous. So mm-hmm. it it does not matter what you're exploring or what you're asking for, whether it's courage or vulnerability, but it, they come together. And that's what I discovered. Like for me, writing the book itself was a huge thing. It took me a lot of courage. The book was talking to me like for about a year and I kept putting it aside thinking, you know, there are scientists like Brené Brown who have researched vulnerability and written (laughs) awesome books on it and who am I here to write again another book on vulnerability and who's going to read it and listen to me and I just put it aside and yeah, and it's only when I realized that oh, I have actually have the courage to choose a lot of things differently in my life. And I, I became aware that I can still write a book on vulnerability, but the way I write it, my point of view, the stories I share, and I'm, above all, I'm bringing me into my book. And mm. me is unique here. So it cannot be like any other book that is already out there. So... That's what gave me the courage to go ahead with it. Beautiful. Wow. We have a question that I, I that kind of resonates with this. Um, a question of in the chat room. Uh, how would I know the real me when I change so much in this reality? Would you like to play with that question? Ah, that's a question I've had, and I used to ponder for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> So I love it. And um, the thing is, what I realized is the real you, being you or being, you know, the real you is just not defined. And there is really no one way to it. And it's not like one path that, oh, okay, I've taken this path and I've done these things and now I've discovered me. It just doesn't work like that because being you is an energy. And that energy is something that can change every single day. I love that. But there is an aspect of that energy which is kind of very unique to you. It's like an energetic signature that mm-hmm. you know that's very special to you, and no one else has it. And mm-hmm. that's the sense to get. So um, you don't look for a cognitive definition that oh, m- being me is X, Y, and Z. But you just get a sense of the energy and what if you can actually choose to be different every day? Yes. Knowing that it's all you. Yes, knowing that it's all you. It wow. all, it encompasses. 
Yeah. And and when we get to the word real, um, someone is has also having an awareness in the chat room. There is no real me, she says. And so yeah, what what are we trying to make real that we're actually trying to fix it in time and space that then creates more of an obstacle for us rather than allowing us to continue to choose with ease. Um, which is a word yeah. that a lot of people seem to have um, some charge around when we talk about with ease, having something with ease. Um, and here's Willie chiming in. Um, what, what, when you, as you have gone through this process over the last few years, what has ease, how has ease shown up for you? <laughs> you yeah. <laughs> That's or have it yet. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I I laugh because I I have stopped I had stopped myself with a definition of ease that I had for a long time because I had somewhere defined ease to be oh I need to be feeling good, I need to be happy and I need to be you know, a certain way, feeling light. But mm-hmm. that's what limited me. Every time I didn't feel that way, I thought I was not having ease. But hey, even discomfort can be ease for me. Oh, I love know? it. Yes. yes, even discomfort can be ease. Yeah. Yeah, it, and it's any, a fascinating any of thing. that. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, and any of that discomfort actually will be contributing to opening up infinite possibilities for you and those are the doorways those are the possibilities you've been asking for you've been demanding for and if you just stick yourself with a point of view of ease should show up in a certain way you cannot really reach that doorway and open up that to the possibility that's there Mm. so much yummy information oh my goodness (laughs) (laughs) so what if we don't define ease and just you know, ask for it to show up. Just ask it to show up, yeah. And and what is interesting is, like, when we are buying into that we're supposed to react to something, you know, if something doesn't go the way we thought it should or if someone says something that lands sideways in our universe, you know, it's interesting because I, for the longest time, I I could so quickly go into defending against or for my point of view relative to the situation, and that doesn't actually create ease. <laughs> um, and as I have played with the tools of access as well as other tools in my in my toolbox, and I love mixing and matching tools kinds of things too. Um, what I'm discovering is much of what you're talking about as well. Um, when something occurs. I'm much more quick to go, well, that was an interesting creation. I wonder what else is possible. And there is much more ease. And it's not that we're ignoring what's going on or that we're discounting it or that we're making it um, less than. It's more of a way to be present with something as it is occurring. And when you're not in reaction to it, there's so much more space. And for me, that's a part of what ease is about. It's, a, it's being that space that, that you don't get into that spiking of the energy, like those peaks and valleys kinds of things. Um, and, and that oh, yeah. is a place that we You have put that choice. across really beautifully. Really beautifully. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, that is where we can have more choice. Do you find that to be, like more choice is available to me when I'm there. Um, yep. It and, is about being present and yes. every time, you know, you are in the question, you're never going to conclusion, you have those choices, you know, plenty of choices open for you to choose. And to me that is ease. Yeah, and and you know what? As we're talking about this, it's like that is also an aspect of vulnerability. When I wonder, do you want to play with that when we come back from the break? <laughs> <laughs> oh yes. That could be fun. Absolutely. Okay. Sounds oh, yummy. I love exploring new things and fun things and oh my gosh, how does it get even awesomer? Okay, my <laughs> beautiful friends, you are listening to Living Well here on A to Zen dot FM. This is Pratima and myself, Keisha Clark, talking about 
being courageously authentic and all of the amazing magical things that 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 involves and that that can create and we will talk more about that right after these messages stay with us have you begun to ask yourself what you truly desire to create in your life what if you being willing to embody abundant living was the key to your wealth and to creating greater in your life and what if that could also be the invitation for more people to be willing to embody abundant living would that be a contribution to you and your body and to other people and their bodies and might that also create more in the future? Join Keisha Clark Empowerment Agent and the host of Living Well Radio Show to discover, uncover, and crack open the wealth of possibilities you are every Friday at 11 a.m. Eastern Time, 10 a.m. Central, 9 a.m. Mountain, and 8 a.m. Pacific on A2Zen.fm. What if there's nothing wrong with you? What if you're far greater than you've ever given yourself credit for? What if it's time to know the gift and the contribution you are to the world and to like yourself a lot more? Hi, my name is Dane here. 13 years ago, I started to truly ask questions. Actually, I started to be the question, and everything changed for me. Asking questions opens doors to infinite possibilities. And it's not about finding the answer. It's about being the question. Always. What I'm inviting you to step into is something that Einstein, Marie Curie, Newton, Da Vinci, Gandhi, Picasso, and Aristotle all knew to be true. What if no question is too big or too small? What if anything is possible for you? What if together we could create a kinder, gentler, happier world? Is now the time? Go to beingyouclass.com and sign up for a free video series, My Gift to You. Beingyouclass.com What if you, truly being you, are the gift and change this world requires? beingyouclass.com How much of your life are you truly living? Are you creating your life in celebration of your strengths and capabilities? What would your life be like if you were choosing the abundance of possibilities of you now? Connect with Keisha Clark, your Living Well Empowerment Agent now for a different perspective on creating the life you truly desire to be living. Call in with your questions in the U.S. 815-880-8255 In Canada, at 613-800-8736 in the UK at 033-0001-0625 by Skype at a2zen.fm or by emailing Keisha at livingwellnow at gmail.com Now back to our show. <laughs> oh, welcome to the next segment of Living Well here on a2zen.fm. I'm talking really fast because we're getting to the last part of our show and we just, in the previous segment, we kind of stepped into something really juicy and yummy and I would love to get back to it. Today I am visiting with Pratima Nagaraj, who uh, amongst many other amazing, beautiful things, has recently uh, released a book, Vulnerability as the Road to Change, and uh, is just this beautiful, beautiful invitation in my interesting point of view and in my awareness um, to choosing greater and choosing beyond where you have created or perceived or defined any limitations to be in your life. Um, and if you have if you have any desire to play with uh, Pratima, Pratima, what is the best way folks could find you in the big wide world? Oh, my website, pratimanagaraj.com. Beautiful. And I do believe, I'm just making, oh, I believe we have that on the replay page. Um, if we don't, we will. So as you are listening to this in the future, you can just scroll down the page and click on the link and find Miss Pratima. And um, you have a way for folks to find your book on your website as well, Pratima? Yep, absolutely, awesome. right on the home page. <laughs> awesome. And you, there is also a Facebook group, uh, book club for for your book, correct? I'm, I'm. Yeah, because I realized that a, one book is just not enough to explore <laughs> this topic. <laughs> so I love for it. People who wanted to have more and dig deeper and explore more, we have a book club where we keep playing more about vulnerability, courage, authenticity, and so much more. Beautiful. Beautiful. So um, right before the break, we were talking about ease and how it's very different than what a lot of people have the um, sort of predetermined opinion that it should be. Um, and I think ease gets overlaid with easy a lot of times, that the two words are sort of yeah. 
jumbled together for a lot of us. I know that for a long time it was for me. Um, but as I have played with more and more tools and really just chose to apply to them, <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm finding that ease is very different than easy. Um, and so totally. where we kind of left off was ease being that space, that, that having that space of ease um, – and and how is that a part of, or is that a part of, vulnerability when we're choosing to be vulnerable? I, I I get that for many of us, we try to make ourselves vulnerable. I know that vulnerability is kind of a, a word that has quite a bit of a charge to it for a lot of folks. And so, first of all, if we're not trying to force ourselves to be vulnerable, and we're just allowing ourselves to have our barriers down, as we talked about in the first segment of the show... Do you what what I'd like to just play with that. What is ease and vulnerability for you? Are you, how does that land for you as you've played with all of this? Yeah. <laughs> you know that your uh whatever you were saying just reminded me of this thing where I was playing with vulnerability like making myself choose it, you know, mm-hmm. like with almost like force or that I have to choose it because it's something that um, real and true, and I was forcing myself to choose it, and I did it for a month, and then um, nothing was showing up, and and I just went to Dane here, and I told him, look, I've been trying this for a month, and I don't see anything showing up yet. When is it going to come up? How long do I have to wait for it? <laughs> <laughs> and he told me, it, can you stop judging whether you're being vulnerable and not, or not, and just continue living your life, and choosing what's light. And when I actually started doing that, that's when it became more easy for me to be more vulnerable and explore more of it. And mm-hmm. uh, yeah, so my point was, you know, it's the judgment of we have to be this, we have to choose this, that stops us from actually having it. Yeah. And so, and, go ahead. Yeah, so... What I wanted to add about your um, comment on ease and vulnerability and how they are related is that, you know, when w- one of the reasons why people resist being vulnerable because when you actually lower your barriers, it, be- it can become very intense. It can mm-hmm. be overwhelming because mm-hmm. you're so much more aware and receiving everything and you don't look at that as ease because of the definition of, you know, everything has to be easy. Yes. Yeah. So that's one of the reasons why we shy away from being vulnerable. But what I've realized is if you are willing to go through that intensity, and as I said, even discomfort can be ease because vulnerability finally is the path that takes you on the road to change that you've been asking for. And for me, having what I've been asking for is ease. I love that. (laughs) (laughs) Say that again. I don't know if that landed for people. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know what came out of my own mouth. (laughs) (laughs) I believe it was... For you, having what you desire is ease. Yes, having what you want. Yeah, that was beautiful. Like, wow. Sometimes I surprise myself. (laughs) (laughs) What would it be like to have that? And, And what would that create in our lives? Wow. What is that creating in your life, Pratima? It has actually given me the courage to ask for more. I mean, ask for insane stuff, like, you know, what I would have never even imagined in in my wildest dreams to ask for. I'm willing to now ask for it because I know I'm willing to go on that path that leads to having it. And I have no point of view that it has to be a certain way. I have to feel a certain way or I have to... Uh, feel comfortable in order to have it. So, I've, in fact, creation has become so much more easy since 
you know, since the time I made that choice because you're demanding for something and then that gets actualized and that's, that's what is ease. <laughs> wow. Wow. Who knew ease was going to come up in the topic of, as part of this topic? I mean, when you're talking about courage, authenticity and vulnerability, very few people would associate ease with that. And how fantastic that we can tap into this energy and have a totally different awareness. I'm loving this. It's so light and yummy and buzzy and fun for me to be acknowledging that, th those sort of like um, interconnectedness of these different words, the energies of these words. And I would never have, I just wouldn't have like cognitively thought of ease as a part of it. And yet, it and I hadn't me. until this conversation wow. today. <laughs> so thank you. <laughs> I love how that works. <laughs> thank you. This is part of the beauty of co-creating. This is and so right. This is a moment that I would just love for to invite everyone. What are you just whatever you're tapping into, whatever you're aware of in this moment. It's like you don't have to cognitively do anything with it. Just these are those moments that I savor, and and they actually contribute gigantically to my life um so yeah this is part of the joy of the being willing to embody abundant living that we talk about so often on my show and all of the many ways that that shows up and today it's showing up as a conversation with beautiful pratima and myself and the many of you who are contributing to this conversation and and look at what we can do this is like this is what i just I thrive on these amazing moments of creation and awareness and acknowledgement. And knowing that this is a part of the creative process is what makes this really so fun for me. Like the energy this brings to all of us as we tap into this. So thank you for being part of this. Thank you for bringing your beautiful book to the world and bringing your beautiful self to the world. <laughs> um, in the amazing courageous so ways that you, you you are doing this you're so welcome um and anytime you would like to come back and play please wave at me um and i will be happy to be co-creating conversation and other things any day um how does it get even better <laughs> well, i had the most amazing time chatting with you here i mean there's so much awareness that i didn't even know that i had until you actually asked the question and as i told you i literally surprised myself with the things that i spoke here today awesome. <laughs> so i'm really grateful for you and thank you so much for having me here oh. Thank you, Pratima. And I'm so glad that we have recordings of these shows. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> so there are some times where we're just like, you know, I'm going to listen to this again, and this will be one of the shows. I'm going to listen to this again. And I invite all of you to listen to this again, or more than one time. Um, sometimes just the energy that is coming up in a show, whether it's being said or not out loud, um, it's just it's such a gift. And each of these shows is such a gift. And Wow, I'm I'm honored and I'm so grateful to Pratima, to you and to everyone who is a part of the creation of all of this um, every week in, for me and for my show and for Ada's in. So, wow, what else is possible with courage and vulnerability? Is there, we have about a 45 seconds. Is there anything you would like to say to the folks today before we complete our conversation, this part of it anyway? <laughs> Yeah, when you actually choose to be vulnerable and choose your authentic self, there is so much more space that opens up in your life. And you will amaze yourself with the things that you can create with that space, with that freedom, where you let go of what others think of you. And wow. you no longer have to be perfect. Wow. Beautiful. Again, thank you, Pratima. Thank you, everyone. And wow, this is episode number 52 for us. So thank you for being a part of my one year. And next week, we're going to be celebrating with a party on the radio. So join us. We have lots of fun and prizes, and who knows what else will show up. In the meantime, have a fabulous week, everybody. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Pratima. Bye. Thank you for listening in today to Living Well with your host, Keisha Clark. 
You are invited to join us every Friday at 11 a.m. Eastern Time, 10 a.m. Central, 9 a.m. Mountain, and 8 a.m. Pacific on A2Zen.fm. In the meantime, what would it take for you to be choosing more of the abundance and prosperousness of you and living well with total ease?